We're about to introduce you to two women, one of them telling a horror story so many people have lived, the other trying to give those stories happier endings. Both say we need to change a system that allows our elderly to live in filth, robbed of their dignity. My mother was spunky. She was a busy bee. That's why it was so difficult for Sandra McManaman to watch what happened. After a third stroke, it um, damaged an area of her brain that she could no longer walk on her own. Eventually, dementia set in. I mean, no matter what, you always hear stories um, about nursing homes and the care, but I was willing to give it a chance, and so was my mom. Money was tight. They opted for Golden Living's Blue Ridge Mountain facility in Dauphin County. Sandra hoped for the best, but nothing could have prepared her or her mom for the worst. I can't sit back and be quiet with what I have witnessed. It didn't take long. The urine and bowel movement uh, odor was a lot of times horrendous. Ants were eating the feces caked with black. It took me seven days to have someone come in and on She would slept in her own. I was pretty much in tears sometimes because I didn't want to leave her. Sandra felt trapped. Golden Living was the only affordable option. It got worse. I got there and she was crying desperately in pain. They said, oh, we've been watching your mother. We don't find at this point anything wrong. But Sandra knew something was very wrong. She says staff refused to call an ambulance. It was stated to me that there's a possibility that she would lose her bed. And I said, well, that's the chance I'm going to take because I need to get my mother to the hospital. At that point, her foot was black and she had a clot. And um, the vascular surgeon told me that if I would have waited another 30 minutes, max, she would have been gone. Sandra says the situation later repeated itself. Her mom in pain, no ambulance called. But this time, Sandra wasn't there to advocate, and she would never have a chance to again. At the end of her life, they never called me. In 2015, the state attorney general sued several Golden Living centers. The lawsuit was based on hundreds of complaints, stories just like Sandra's. Golden Living says the allegations aren't true. Our own investigations found issues in Golden Living and other facilities across the state. So why is this allowed to happen? We went to Dr. Karen Murphy. She's been Pennsylvania's Secretary of Health for a little more than a year. What were your first thoughts? Did you see any potential improvements? When I came to the Department of Health and began working with the whole staff, we began to look at all of uh, the aspects of our work. Shortly after the Golden Living lawsuit, Dr. Murphy asked the Auditor General to assess the Health Department. She also created a task force to find solutions. But is that enough? Why haven't these facilities been shut down? So I, I, the, the um, findings in many of our nursing home reports, they are extremely disturbing to myself, extremely dis disturbing to the staff, and certainly not a value that the Wolf Administration has for taking care of uh, Pennsylvanians. Dr. Murphy says closing a nursing home can actually hurt patients. Take a Golden Living facility, for example. Shutting it down means moving 200 plus residents. There could be injuries. Plus, other nursing homes are already crowded with staffing issues. The state can take other action. Provisional licenses, fines, even bans on admitting new residents. Numbers from the Department of Health show a crackdown in 2015. A 160% increase in actions against nursing homes, with a 200% increase in fines, including Golden Living. But Dr. Murphy says there are deeper issues. Our regulations were last revised in 1999, and we feel that life has changed dramatically for nursing home residents. The task force will recommend changes, but Dr. Murphy admits turning recommendations into laws won't be easy. That's why families are frustrated. Here is the list of concerns. Remember, Sandra, her story's not over. There's got to be a way of finding a, a remedy to this. It's inhumane how these people are living. After 
realizing she couldn't afford a lawsuit, Sandra and nine others went to lawmakers, testifying at the Capitol, telling them everything she told us. This was two years ago. I never heard anything else from them. So, to me, where are the people who are supposed to be helping these people when it comes to their rights, when it comes to their dignity for those who have felt ignored a promise how important is it to get this issue right it's very important it is important we um it's important for every human being to be taken care of um with the highest quality care whether they're in an acute care hospital whether they're in a nursing home um this is our most vulnerable state when we're being taken care of for others so it is critically important we get this right. That gives Sandra hope, not only for those who can't help themselves, but also for her mother's memory. I just feel in my heart that she's helping me do this. It's a story that certainly resonates with a lot of people. Now, Sandra and Dr. Murphy do not want people to blame nurses across the board. They say many are doing the best they can with very limited resources. And uh, we're hearing, we were talking earlier, so much about nursing home violations recently. Why do you think that it's becoming more in the forefront? We talked to the health secretary about that, and there are a lot of reasons, but she says a big one is the complaint process. So it used to be if you were filling out a complaint, you had to identify yourself. Now it's all anonymous, so there's no fear of retaliation, and the Department of Health says as a result, complaints have gone up by 34%, which means now we have more inspections. And we're going to hear from you tomorrow? Exactly. We have lots of follow-ups on this story I'm expecting in the days to come, um, but we do have more on this plan for tomorrow as well. Thank you, Amanda. All right, just ahead. Tonight's Hometown Heroes.